Okay, so I was born and raised to most well until the age of eight in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Um, I spent most of my life in an orphanage. Like I, my mom died, I think when I was like one or two, and my dad was never in, really in the picture, so I just didn't really know him. So I spent most of my life in an orphanage from six to eight. And then when I was turned eight, I was told that I was getting adopted. So I got adopted around my birthday, I think, to the U.S. And to be more specific, like Phoenix, Arizona is where I got adopted. Um, I spoke a little bit of English, like just like the basics, like, hi, my name is. And just like asking people like, hey, how are you? Just because they teach you that in the orphanage, just to prepare you for like the places you'll go. Um, they were teaching us English and French because that's the two places our orphanage sent people. So that's... And then I spent most of my life at high school, middle school, and elementary school in Arizona. And then now I'm in Utah for college and I don't know how, long, how much longer. So when did you start running? Um, I tried. So like me and my parents didn't get along very well. And so their way of Always trying, or just at first? Uh, until like probably high school. Okay. Um, so for a good chunk. I mean, it was a combination of just like a new lifestyle. Just because I had a lot of freedom when I when I was in the orphanage and like I didn't really have anybody like watching out for me, so like I got to do whatever I want in a way. So and then came to the U.S. They're telling me like you can't leave the house like without us. So, like you can't do this, this, and like just like just so much like they're just trying to control me in a way. I didn't enjoy that part. Mm. So then their way of like letting me do what I want to do is like let me try sports. Mm. So I played soccer, I played basketball, I played hockey. They just let me try almost every sport except running because running didn't seem very enticing at that point. Um, so I played soccer until pretty much high school. And then I ran track without really practicing most of middle school. But I truly inv- like committed to running my freshman year in high school. Like that's when I, I went all in and like my friends were doing it. So I was just like, yeah, I'll join. So I officially, I want to say I start running in high school, but I did run a little bit in middle school. Just Mostly like just like soccer. And yeah, so I did soccer in the fall, and then I'll just show up doing track meets and just run track. Just cause my coach was like, yeah, you're, you're good in the mile and the PE. So like, so it was almost like a passive decision. Pretty of like, much, everyone else is doing it, so I'm just gonna do it too. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. So when did you start to like actually enjoy it for you and not just for like the friends? you were doing i mean i or was it just i think it was always friends because my freshman like um eighth grade year all the kids that were running the mile like at the conference meet all of us decided to go to the same high school anyway and my freshman year was probably our most successful year all of it like we were pretty much like going to meets and like winning them we were going like one through five and like we were just having a lot of fun doing it and that just led to big chemistry. Like by the end of it, like we were probably one, we were the most successful team in Arizona. Like by then, because we had so much team chemistry built, and I think I enjoyed running most because of that. Like even to this day, like my best friends are still the ones from high school that got me into running. Um, for the longest time, I enjoyed it for that reason. Um, now, I, like trying to do a post collegiately, you have to enjoy it yourself to be able to be more disciplined, and just like do it for fun and just be a hobby jogger until one day you get a pro contract. But Mm. yeah yeah it seems like you run with friends a lot still though i still run with friends it's just they're new friends they're just like mm. new friends with almost the same goal as i have like i most like the friend the friendships that i make it's always about people that have the same mindset as me or like the same like goals and aspirations if they want what they want to achieve um, right now everybody that i train with uh, we all have the same goal of we want to run at the olympic trials we're all we're all qualified and like we're all in like going our next race we're all running the same race and then after that we might we might part ways for a little bit and run our events but we'll eventually come back to to the same event eventually Mm. um i want to go back to that hobby jogger thing that you said because i remember you posting that on instagram like (laughs) i don't even know a couple months ago and i like remember like laughing out loud because you're like i mean running definitely funded your college career right so I think you said something along the lines of like that at that point running was not a hobby it was a yeah, job pretty much but now because you're not I'm... making money off of it you consider yourself a hobby jogger yes because I, I i mean yes i consider myself a hobby jogger just because i mean i don't have a pro contract i have i don't have any of that i'm i'm doing it for the fun and for the love of the sport um and I post about it and people get mad because like, yeah, you're pretty fast. Like, you're not a hobby jogger. I'm like, yeah, I'm still, I'm fast, but like, I don't really get any extra benefit than you guys don't. Like, I, I may get a free entry into races here and there, mm-hmm. 
but besides that, I don't really get any passes. Like, I still have a full time job, like everyone else, and I just do this on the side. Like, I don't really have, as of right now, I like I told myself the next thirteen weeks, I don't have a life. I try, I wake up, I run, go to work, come home, eat, and then go back to the gym, run, double sauna, lift. Like, that's I, that's what I told myself I'm going to do for the next thirteen weeks, just because. I know that's my best chance of succeeding at the trials is just going all in for the next 13 weeks of just, just crying as much as I could without, within reason, of course, without getting hurt. Yeah. So. And that's what I think is also super interesting about you right now is like you're at the precipice of like you're working full time, almost full time mm -hmm. and you're training like a full time athlete. So like I've heard a lot of elite athletes now talk about the times when they had to like both work and train and how difficult that was to like grind through that. Yeah. But it's just like such, to me, it's so interesting to like see you doing this like 30, 40 hours a week at work, 30 hours training every week. I don't know how many hours uh, you're training. The training but. is not, it's like right now I'm around like 12 hours of running and okay. then an additional like three hours of biking and then probably an additional, like it's probably closer to 20 just with between like strength training, strength training sauna and like all that stuff. It's probably closer to 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, the warm up and all that takes a little longer. So I'll probably consider like 22, 23 hours just because mm -hmm. the transition period right now, winter being in Utah, like it's kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. Like most of my runs lately have been on the treadmill just because I hate the cold, but I don't want to sacrifice of like, li like going down to sea level because mm. like I, I enjoy training at altitude I, I get I know the benefits of training at altitude so a lot of people are leaving like I can go home to Arizona and train but I think staying here is more beneficial for me and the transition period right now like I'm running I'm going to the, the treadmills which is like 15 minute drive r running doing all that stuff and then I have another 15 minute drive and then I shower eat breakfast and try to make it to work um, luckily I have a job that's super flexible. Like my boss allows all this to happen. Um, mm. so most days I go into the office around 10 AM and then leave around four and then just to do it all over again, I guess. That's so crazy. That is definitely a grind. Also sleep. You have to get yeah eight plus hours. How much are you sleeping right now? Um, probably close to that. Like I, I'm usually un unwinding around like seven thirty eight, like making dinner and then like in bed by around nine and then up mm. again by like six thirty seven, and then. Mm. Just doing that all, do over, it all again. over again. Yeah, That's like crazy. I get lucky on the weekends where I can take naps, but mm -hmm. during the week it's kind of tough to take naps. Mm. So right now you have Olympic qualifiers in yeah. thirteen weeks. Uh, it's ten weeks now. It's on February third. Oh, yeah, it's mm. February third in Orlando, Florida, uh, in the marathon. Mm. So. so tell me about like how you got there, why you started marathon. I mean, it, it all started with me making like making jokes with my friends, saying like five minute miles is a, like it's just it's just it's kind of easy. Like I told him like it's like, it like I can do that for a half marathon easily. And then one day, like two years ago, I ran a half marathon and like down the Provo Canyon, I was like five flat. And then my friends like, oh Dane, dude, you're fit. And I'm like, well, I told you I can run five flats pretty easily. And then I realized like my strength comes from the endurance, just because getting Achilles surgery, like I don't have the same. Um, explosion that I used to have like when I was younger I used to run a pretty fast mile I mean I can still run a pretty fast mile it's just off of like strength rather than speed so I lost a lot of speed with my Achilles surgery so I was just like I think I can run a pretty fast half and then I ran one and then I'm like well if I can like increase my mileage a little bit I think I can run a fast full so that was in the back of my head last track season like so I in a way like I was training for track season but at the same time I would tell myself like in the back of my head I had a marathon in my head so um, I think in the summer, that summer, so like 2022 summer, I went to Alamosa, Colorado, where my, most of my friends, like it's a D2 powerhouse, like cross country powerhouse. And like, it's at like 8,000 feet. I went down there. And I'm like, my friends were like, Hey, like you just come here and run with us. Like we were, we were running hundred miles a week. So I just went down there and just like, I've never ran more than 70 miles before that. So I, I went and I went up there and just start running. And like, all, if all, when, when you just focus on just running, running hundred miles a week is pretty easy. So I went down there, ran with them for most of it, but I think I overtrained to that summer where like I came to the season pretty cooked. So my first like three, four races of the season, I was just barely making travel and just like stuff like that. And then um, towards the end, I was like sl slowly tapering. And then like I had my breakout race was my regional cross country championships. And my coach was like, oh, dang Hobbs. And like, and then I saw that as an opportunity of like, like I can be like, hey coach, can I get a scholarship increase? Cause like, I don't want to work for next mm -hmm. semester. Cause I want to focus on running. 
with with that being an intention of like I wanted to run fast in, in track as, as well as like being have the freedom to run as much as I could. So my coach was like, yeah, like I will give you a scholarship increase if you if you uh, plan on doing what you say. You did. Like I set him down. I'm like, here, here's what I want to do, and this is what I'm going to do if you give me the scholarship increase. I set him down. Like I'll win the first, I'll win my first conference title. I will go pretty much undefeated, and like that's what I told him. And it was a little harder than I anticipated, and which I, I achieved all of that. Like I said, everything I told him to achieved. I won the three k indoors. I won the five k indoors while running hundred miles a week. Like like I tapered once and that was for conference every other race i had 100 miles under my legs and like that gave me just an overwhelming of confidence in myself and like people just hated that confidence in myself because like i've never had that much confidence in myself until like recently and i just kept running 100 miles a week and i'm just like all right like we'll run a marathon and like as soon as i graduate i'll go run a marathon in minnesota but that was the original intention like because like i knew that olympic trials was just i mean the period ends this weekend like the qualifying period ends this weekend and I told myself, I'm like, all right, like, I'm going to go d- during the summer and run a marathon. But until then, I got to keep my volume high. So I was just running 100 miles a week while trying to, like, still be sharp enough to run college races and win college races. So I s- was doing this, out- doing all that and then went th- went to outdoor conference, stayed undefeated. But at the same time, I think just all of that volume caught up to me eventually because, like, our regionals, like, I wasn't, like, my best self or, like, people were making moves I just wasn't able to respond to those moves and my season and my track season ended quicker than I anticipated I made it to the regional championship which is still the farthest I ever made it and then I was just like whatever like I'll just go around a marathon and see how that goes and then I didn't get into the marathon I wanted to get to so I was just like whatever I'll just go for a half so I went to Minnesota ran uh the Duluth like in Duluth Minnesota half marathon and ran 6319 which is missing the Olympic trials by like 19 seconds my first attempt and then my friends were like dude that's sick like you like you PR by like uh, I think a minute and 40 seconds in my half marathon and at this point you'd been training for 10ks and 5ks only right yeah at this and point this is the like... half marathon is kind of a different game yeah mm-hmm. it's I mean my like again my thought process was like all right like in track season my 10k PR is like I think 435s per mile so my thought process is like if I can run 435s for six miles I can slow down by like 15 seconds per mile and run a half marathon. So I was like, oh, that should be easy, walk in the park. But I was like forgetting the little things of like feeling and all that. Like I didn't mm. train anything. I didn't, like during my half marathon, I took nothing. I just like got That's one so off. Insane. Like I woke up that morning, like I, I, I planned it poorly because like I woke up that morning and I just like had no food in my room because like I didn't plan very well. So I had like a Pop-Tart from like the vending machine. So I ate a Pop-Tart on the, on the way to the start. And then I got to the start, I'm like, all right, like, Pop tart commercial. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So I eat a pop tart and I'm like, all right, like, all right, let's go. And then the gun went off and just like nobody was willing to take the pace. Like I was hoping, like I didn't have to lead, so I ended up leading for like a little over ten miles, and then I lost the race with like two miles to go. Those guys were just like ready to go because they're just like behind me, just enjoying the ride the whole time. And then after that, um, I reached out to a couple of like the BYU guys. I'm like, hey, like I'm running a marathon, hopefully in like the next like six like three four months and like if you guys can I train with you guys and then they're like yeah like but at this point again like I talked to my coach I'm like hey like I still have eligibility next year like I would like to, I would love, love to come back I just need to go achieve this goal first so I was I planned on taking a gap semester for the fall because like that's usually most of the marathons happen in the fall so I'm like all right I'm gonna take a gap semester and then go run Chicago Th- that was the original intention and then I emailed Chicago and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, like our elite field's full, like you're not fast enough to get into our elite field. So I was like, all right, like I need to find a second like option and which came down to, um, it's called the McCurdy Micromarathon. It was just like a race specifically set for people to run very fast. So I'm like, all right, like I'll just shoot my, my shot. I'm just like, that will be my race I want to go to. No, it's here in Utah, right? It's No, it's in New York. Oh, it's in New York. Yeah. Oh, so cool. uh, I emailed the meet director and I was like, hey, like how confident are you this race will be fast like because like I don't want I didn't want to go down and race a race where like I can go race anywhere and run 218 by myself like I told I knew that I could do that by myself I wanted to see how fast I can run so I was like hey like how confident are you like um this race will be fast and he's like oh I'm positive like oh, I, they have pacers and everything so I was like all right perfect so I signed up for that race um this race like you don't get elite entries you get nothing you get absolutely zero perks uh, Chicago, you usually get like, sometimes they pay for, they, they'll give you free entry. That's about it. Mm. And this race, though, I had to pay for my own entry. It was like $150. And then I had to buy my plane ticket there and then find a way there because it was like outside, like an hour outside of Manhattan. So I had to find a way to get there, 
hotels and all that. I got lucky enough where I had friends in New York that I stayed with. Like I was there for a week and a half. I stayed with my friends for most of it. And then I got a hotel like right across the street from the race the night before. And then I saved a lot of money in terms of like hotel there. But I bought my plane ticket and all that. Went to the race and then like the race, like the, the, the gun went off and then I'm just like, I was still like hesitant of like what to do. Like, cause like I wanted to like get the qualifying out of the way. But at the same time, I didn't want to be too like caught up in the moment and just like go out too hard. Yeah. And so, and then we we start going, and I'm just like, this just feels a little easy. Like we were going like five flats over and over and over and over. And like I'm, I was training for this pace at altitude, so I was just like, oh, this is like exactly what I anticipated it would, it would feel like. And then I still started listening to people's like uh, people's thoughts kept like creeping into my head. I'm like, all right, like you need to feel, 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 feel. So every every lap, I would, it was like a three mile loops we were doing over and over. So I would, like every lap, I would grab my bottle, like which came some, for some reason it came naturally. I was like grab it, put, t- take the lid off, drink like a good chunk of it because like it's an eight ounce bottle. I put, filled everyone with like five ounces of a Morton drink mix, and I would drink like three to four ounces and just like drink it. And then I'm like, and then I would throw it off to the side, and drink it. I did about four of those, and I got twenty ounces of liquid in my belly, and just like just like moving around. How many miles is that? That's like twelve miles. Uh, then? Yeah, so mm. three. Yeah, so there was just so much liquids in my belly. And you, I, you can hear it too, like just like like juggling mm. around there. And I was just like kind of worried because like I've never done well like drinking and running, like because mm. like that's why I've, I, I always I was always hesitant on taking liquids on like my half marathons because like I don't know how my body was gonna handle it. And I didn't train very well for it too because leading up to my marathon, I trained with bottles maybe twice. And I decided my nutrition. So did nutrition. you just not hydrate other than that when you were training? Yeah. I just, okay. I was just like, I can do this without drinking anything. And it's pretty, with, like, I mean, I was running 20 miles at like six flat. It was most of, well, that, that's the hardest thing I did up here for that long. Yeah. So I was just like, I could do it without drinking. Um, but I, my friends were like, no, dude, like, this marathon, like you're going to bonk a mile 20. And like, mm-hmm. in my perspective, I didn't feel a bonk. I just like had other problems that I was just so focused, laser focused on. That I was just like, all right, like let's just get. After a while, like that cramp, stop having to stop three times, wasting so much time. I was just like, mm-hmm. all right, like let's just get to the finish line and just hope it's under two eighteen. Mm-hmm. That was the point. I was just like focused, and then like that race gave me more confidence in myself than anything else. I'm like, all right, if I can do this without cramping, like like without having side stitches, like I think I can run significantly faster. And when I posted that, oh, like a lot of people were so mad. They're like, dude, like you're a two sixty marathoner, like talking big game that like, you can run two eleven, this and this. I'm like, I'm like. I'm sorry, like, if you don't believe in me, like, I don't care. Like, it's, like, that's the problem with, like, putting yourself out there on social media is, like, mm-hmm. that you're going to have a lot of people that are going to be, like, wow, this guy is just all talk. Like, he can only run fast. When I'm, like, yeah, like, I recently got fast, and I know it, and, like, I'm not going to deny it. Like, I spent a lot of time just, like, injured and, like, just didn't know what to do. I wanted to do with running. And, like, finally, like, the last year is when I was, like, like run. I want to take running very seriously. And I started taking running, running very seriously recently, and... I don't know. People just want to say what they want to say, I guess. Because like I've, I haven't had yeah. like I, I just talk big game because I haven't had that much success in the college scene, and like part of me wanted to go back to college this semester to like to prove a lot of people wrong, but I would be going back for the wrong, wrong reason, and I didn't mm-hmm. want to go back to track and finish my eligibility for that reason. So I was like, mm-hmm. so I, I'm just trying to do what's best for me these days. So that's yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, though, I remember my first ever long run that mm-hmm. I started drinking I literally threw up I think I drank like eight (laughs) ounces of water yeah it was probably about like 20 mile I mean like 10 miles that I drink in like eight ounces of water and I just threw up because like my my stomach wasn't used to it so like to do a full marathon and for like in reality the first time ever to be fueling that much and that often is like actually insane to me like when you say that I'm like how did you not just like (laughs) throw everything oh i did throw crazy. up at the end like oh, just, the end, I just, my body's okay. waited because like my body will shut down the moment it throws up it's, it will shut down mm-hmm. so i was just like my body just waited You're and then like, I, cr- I crossed the finish line there's a picture of me i crossed the finish line and i was like bent over and was, like throwing up that's insane but that's yeah so crazy um this build where we have this guy um his name is todd garner he is being super helpful like it's really cold in the mornings and he's mm-hmm. biking with us every single day he has like a basket on his on his bike mm-hmm. and he has all our bottles on his bike and we're doing like 20 to 25 miles and he's like right next to us with bottles like hey That's who needs so bottles nice. every five miles he's like handing us bottles because he knows like how important that is yeah so he's being super helpful he's been 
doing it for about five weeks now mm. and he plans on doing it every week for the next 10 more weeks he's like i'll be here if you guys need it like that's so sick so uh, he's is this just like a friend of the team um, or like so, yeah guy? he is like a big donor for byu so okay. like he doesn't have to do this if he doesn't want to like but mm. he just loves the sport and like wants to help out in the sport so cool. he just like comes along and like he's a big marathoner himself too so like mm-hmm. he um he's run marathons all around utah mm-hmm. so he just wants to see like utah succeed so like he just comes out and like we, every saturday morning we have a big group group long run mm-hmm. and he's there and there's like anyone's welcome to him. And as long as you can hang like, that you're welcome to and he just like lets us put his bottles in there um he's still trying to figure out how to stay warm just because biking, biking in you don't 20 really, degrees is is very tough it's yeah. hard so <laughs> But yeah, he doesn't really get much benefit from it, but he's just there for us more mm-hmm. than anything else. So I, it's, I appreciate it personally just because I personally struggle with feeling. And I think I've improved already significantly just because I've had two, I've had three long runs and mm-hmm. he's been there at all of them. And I've been feeling every four miles and just like drinking the same drink mix, not, not messing with anything and just like, and it works so far. Did you change the amount that you're drinking at all? or did I, you? Yes, I don't, I usually take like three big gulps. And then mm-hmm. just about it. And then just trying to like see how like, I'm trying to figure out what works for me yet. Like last time I had, I think a 16 ounce bottle and I finished it in a 20 mile long run. So I just need to like know when to stop drinking rather than mm-hmm. just trying to force myself to drink. Yeah. And then I I, I like to sprinkle like uh, goose as well. So like I just during the race, I was like tying. I, I had taped a bunch of like uh, Morton gels to mm-hmm. my bottle give myself variety just because of like if i'm like all right i'm full but i can still take a gel and get mm-hmm. the same benefit so uh, i tape a gel it's a wait it's a big waste because all those You're drugs are four dollars i know so, so i'm just wasting expensive. a lot of money during the race <laughs> and i don't get to get those bottles back so mm-hmm. but i in my eyes i think it's worth the investment of just like putting it uh, give myself options so mm-hmm. if i don't don't feel like drinking liquids i can take a gel that's the same benefit mm. it's crazy so now you're fine. In your training, at least, you've been fine. Uh, at least in my training, yeah. I've been fine with nutrition. feeling. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I'm again, I'm also new to this. I've only been doing this for like six months, so I don't really know too yeah, much. Yeah, that's also so insane. Yeah. Me. That's crazy. So I'm hoping to get better at the feeling, and like the, that's hopefully the last problem I will have with it. And just my main focus will be pace, hopefully. Just holding my marathon pace as long as I can. Mm. Hopefully, it's the, it's the only problem that I have rather than the fueling. But. Mm. Yeah, one thing you actually have talked about a lot on your social media, and then you mentioned a little bit earlier when you told your coach, like, hey, I'm going to win yeah. all of these races, is, like, self-belief, I think is the way that you put it. Yeah. Like, where do you get it? Is it, like, I've seen what my times are, I yeah. know what I'm capable of, or is it, like, what is it for you? Like, uh, for me, I think it? It, it depends on the levels. Like, so when I was in college, like – the time didn't really matter or anything. Like the only belief that I had in myself was like, I need to win these. Like in mm-hmm. college when I was running the 5K, 3K, 10K, like all those events when I was running, the only thing was like, I, t- I told myself, like, I know I could beat all those people. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being unreasonable. Like, like I went into all those races seated, seated number one. Like mm. I wasn't seated, like with the exception of one of them, I was seated number one going into every single one. The, usually the odds of somebody winning all of them is very hard just because you have 24 hour recovery in between those races. And some people go into those races fresh and the people are like coming back and doubling. Like one of my harder races was, was a 3K. I won the 5K the night before and then the 3K was the next night. And like I told people, I'm like, all right, like if you want to beat me, you have to come and, come and take the lead from me because like nobody was willing to lead it. So I was like, I went to the front and just like, like tr- just like trusting my fitness and just like knowing that I put all the works in pretty much. It's just like mm. uh, going for it. Like for the longest time, I didn't have that that ability to do that just because my Achilles was just like, like most of my, before I tore my Achilles, I was still, I was having a lot of Achilles problems. So like I wasn't able to put in all the, like the work that I needed to be to give me like the confidence. Like so the confidence came from all like, like putting in all the hundred mile weeks and like putting all like, like all that training in. That's where my confidence came from. And then seeing the results was where it came from. Like, and then the marathon, like, I knew I wasn't going to win the race, but I knew that I, I, I want to run my best race and like believing in myself. I'm like, I know I can run 211. Mm. But like, is it going to be 211 today? Maybe not. But like, I'm going to shoot for it. If it doesn't happen and I fade back and like, I still have a seven minute buffer to the Olympic trial standard. Mm. So that, that's what I was telling myself. I'm like, just like, if you don't believe in yourself, like nobody else is going to believe it. Like you have to be your number one supporter as well as your number one hater. Like mm. I personally like, like I'm the hardest person on myself. It doesn't matter if I'm running the best race in my life. I know I can always do better. Like just that. Like and my parents don't know too much about running, so like it's 
it, yeah. So that, that's the thing. In, in my eyes, I think I'm my biggest supporter as well as my biggest hater. Because like, if you ever, if you follow me on Strava, like most of the time, like I'm eat, like I'm significantly like disappointed in my performances most of the time, just because like I know I can always do better. And like, and if I lose the race, I mean, I know I didn't do the greatest because I didn't win it. But if I wasn't even seated, like the Olympic trials, I'm like, I'm seated a hundredth. Anything below a hundred is a win. But I'm going to be disappointed if I don't finish top 50 or like top 20. Like I'm going to look at like all the people entered and then see like, or hypothetical, I think I should finish. And then if I don't finish there, I'm going to be somewhat like hard on myself. But at the same time, I'm, I'm going to be proud of the effort because like, I mean, not a lot of people can make it as of right now, I think. Thousands of people have attempted trying to qualify. Only 200 people have achieved that. So, like, I'm still going to be proud of the effort. It's just at the end of the day, I'm like, I'm going to be hard on myself. And usually when I'm hard on myself, I'm only hard on myself for, like, less than a day. Like, mm. I mean, you have to move on. And, like, I don't know. I, that's, I think that's the one thing I do best with myself is just, like, I get it. Like, the performance didn't go very well. But, like, I also need to move on. But, again, like, people hate that when I do well as well, like I make sure people know it because like, like a conference, my coach was so mad. And it's like, all right, like the, the first day that I won the first race, like I was just like, wow, whatever. Like I just like popped the jersey and just like, it's fine. Like I won. The second day when I won the, like the second event, I was just like, I wasn't expecting to win it just because with like two laps ago, somebody took the front from me. And like I was like having doubts in my head. I'm like, no, don't have this. Like in a way of just telling, like telling myself, like don't, like, like, don't give up yet. And like that's the one thing, like just like telling yourself, like, like you're 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 better than you actually are, and just like lie, fall, like just false, just just lying to yourself and like how good you could be and how good you are at that moment. So I just like told myself, like just like forget about it and like go for it. And like I've never closed that hard in a race. And like I ran that race with like like I I could I didn't I couldn't even feel my legs. I was just like just running because like I knew there was like I saw I put a target on that guy's back and I just like ran as hard as I could. And then, like, I didn't pass them until, like, like two, like, five meters before the finish. Like, right at the finish, and I just started celebrating. My coach was so mad. I'm like, dude, like, be humble. I'm like, I don't know. But, like, I just, in my eyes, I was just like, that That was, like, a win in my eyes. I, I knew it wasn't fast race. So I knew it wasn't anything impressive. It was just, like, in my eyes, I was like, I thought it was impossible for a long time. Like, I did the same thing two years ago at the conference championships and lost every single event. I went to the front, led every single lap, and then lost with, like, two laps to go. So, like, I've had that same confidence. It's just, like, it's just I wasn't winning or anything doing well to back up my own confidence. So, and yeah. that's probably part of the challenge of it, though, too, yeah. is, like, I think in a way that confidence, although sometimes it's, like, almost blind confidence, right? It's, mm -hmm. like, you've lost the last few races. Yeah. Like, it's almost necessary to, like, be good at what you do because, mm -hmm. like, without the confidence you won't be able to win yeah but then like to fail and to fail and to fail and then to still be able to like trick your mind into thinking okay like i'm gonna win this one yeah it's like actually hard i'm assuming oh, it's so hard yeah. i mean i from high school to like most of college i didn't win a single race like I, I i lost every single race with a lap to go and like most of them i lost within like less than like 50 meters to go like people will just like come from behind and just like almost like keep like take my confidence down a notch here and there just because mm -hmm. like most of the races I was like seated first going into those races in high school mm -hmm. and everything like and then there's just like I don't know just a confidence like my confidence was like shot for a long time in high school just because it started my sophomore year where like I was seated at number one I was, everybody was talking like oh Hobbs is gonna win it this and this and then just like absolutely just lost by like significant amount and then everybody was just like oh wow like and then like that started leading to it and then for the longest time my parents were like Hey, like we'll, t we'll take you to a sports psychologist if you need it and stuff like that. Like they kept offering that <laughs> and I kept denying it. I'm like, no, I don't need it. Like I just, cause like they, they, they saw the ranking, they saw everything, but like they saw that I wasn't winning. Mm. So like for the longest time, they're like, dude, like if you need to go to sports psychologist, my mom was like, I'll pay for it. I'll do this and this. And like, no, I was like, it's like, no, I believe in myself. It's just like, I don't know. just like, just wasn't winning for the longest time. Yeah. And it's my fitness wasn't to my confidence level, I guess, but. And I think that's something about like elite athletics mm -hmm. that's actually really cool because like the majority of people will never relate to you in that you run marathons. Yeah. The majority of people will never relate to you that you run five minute miles for those marathons. Yeah. But like the fact that you like have to sometimes pull this confidence out of nowhere and like believe in yourself when like it just like kind of seems impossible yeah. is something that like everyone can relate to. And so that's that's the thing that I think is really cool about 
your story and like a lot of other people's stories is that like you find it inside of you to like pull it out does that make sense yeah i mean i won't talk too much about it but like most of my runs like i do a lot of like a chunk of my runs by myself and like i just catch myself like daydreaming in my own head mm-hmm. and like some like sometimes i've almost like put headphones in just like to block it out just because like those just like daydreams almost are unrealistic but I, they're still happening because like and i still believe that it will happen one day it's just like yeah i don't know it's just my head just goes in different places and just like tells my I, and I, it tells my body I'm like dude like just stay healthy and you can do this this and this and this and just like and it's it's like it's already had a, a ma- everything mapped out until like 2028 mm. and I'm just like which is the next Olympic trials and like I, I haven't even gone through this one yet and mm-hmm. like my head's already thinking 2028 so I don't know yeah but like big dreams or like daydreams yeah. like that is probably like everyone asks you all the time like how would you stay motivated and like. Mm-hmm you're daydreaming about it all the time. Like that's yeah. how you stay motivated is like you want it, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, like original, my original plan was like Olympic trials 2028. And like, mm-hmm. I was just using 2024 as a trial experience. Like, like I was just like, I was, I was just like trial. I'm like, I'll see how it goes. Like I'll see mm-hmm. if I'll enjoy this and stuff like that. And like, and like the, like the ultimate plan was always to go back to college, like, like finish mm-hmm. the fall of just running a marathon and then go back to college and then run indoor track and then outdoor track. And like, the trials was just gonna be like a fun run, where like just like oh I made it, like I, I just want to get experience stuff like that. Now it's like it's completely shifted of like I want to see how well I want to do. And like, m- like me, like I had a, the longest time for like over a month. I was just like debating back and forth to myself, like the pros cons of like of like foregoing the rest of my eligibility and just like trying to like fully go into like the marathon. So I mean. Yeah, so like it's it's been a long it's a it's been a long of like a long road of just trying to decide what I wanted to do because mm-hmm. like for the longest time like I think it was in October I was just trying to decide what I wanted to do like do I want to stay in Utah do I want to go Flagstaff because like Flagstaff would be uh, the most ideal place for me to train just because one it's close to my parents uh, two it's just like I have a lot of friends that moved from high school to Flagstaff and train stuff like that so like I was like debating whether or not if staying in Utah was even a good idea and like I almost left. Like I almost bought a plane ticket. Like I almost like almost packed everything and tried to sell my lease like two months ago and try to see if I leave Utah. But I decided that I'm staying in Utah for another like two more years. So dang the winters, <laughs> the winters like that's You've what did to me. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I think if I want to be as good as I want to be in the marathon, I think staying in Utah is probably the best idea for me. Because of training at elevation, or because of your community here. Both. Both. Mm. Is it the guys that you train with? The guys that are coaching you? A combination of both, and we're hoping to gain more and more people to come. Because, mm. like, my friends have seen, like, I have a few friends that have are in the same boat as me, where, like, they think their best events are on the roads rather than in college. Like, they run in the 10Ks in college and stuff like that, but they think that they will be better in the half and the full. And they're asking me, like, what, what my plans are for, like, 2024, 2025, just because they want to see if they want to come and train with me. Mm. So I told them, I'm like, hey, like, I always have a place for you to come stay if you want to come train. But right now, just like focus on college just because like they haven't qualified and then the next period to qualify for the Olympic trials is starts, I think, 2026, whatever. So I was mm-hmm. like, just focus on college and then you, you, we can talk about this later because the top three choices are Flagstaff, Arizona, Utah and Colorado, like mm-hmm. Boulder, Colorado are the three choices that they threw out of where they want to live. Mm-hmm. So in a perfect world, just like get them all to move down here. But I don't know. Utah lifestyle is not for everyone. Yeah. I personally enjoy it just because I don't really do much. So it's, it works for me. Mm. And like, I love Sundays. Mm. EOS is open on Sundays. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Get on the treadmill. Eh? Yeah. So, yeah. But. yeah. I think that's actually something that's super cool about running is like at every level, even though it's such an individual sport, it's like such a mental game with yourself, like trying to play tricks with yourself and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's also like such a community sport and like, you're not going to be good unless you're, with good people and yeah. you're not going to be able to push yourself unless someone's pushing I forgot you who too. told me this but like it's like somebody told me of like like find somebody that what you want to be as good as and just like mimic everything they do and like for the longest time before I joined that group I cause like Connor Manson right now is like the number one uh, ranked American marathoner mm. and like that's the person I trained with for the longest time I mimicked everything he did before I even joined their group mm. I mimicked everything he did he does workouts Mondays Thursdays and does a long run every Saturday and I mimicked everything to the, everything he did to the T to a point where like some days I would ask him like, hey, like, what do you guys do even do for your lifts? And like, what do you do this for this? Like, like I just like mm-hmm. pick their brains and like, cause like I want to be as good as them. I want to be like, 
I want to, one day I, I want people to be like, hey, like I want to be like Hobbs. I want to mimic everything he does. Cause like everything they do is not a typical marathoner does. Like mm-hmm. they just because, I don't know. I mean, one of the reasons being that they're all, they're all Mormon that like, they don't run on Sundays that, mm-hmm. that I don't know if that helps them or hinders them in a way, but a lot of people are like, no, like marathoners, you're supposed to do a hard workout and then have two day break. Like they train every other day. doesn't matter mm-hmm. with, with the exception of races, like their schedule are exactly the same every week mm. and do the same. They do a variation of five workouts. They, they don't change much. Mm. And a lot of my, like a lot of people can get bored from that. I like that. I like the boring just because it's predictable and you be like, I did this last time. So I'm gonna try to get near that or slightly faster than that. Like, mm. and I compare myself from what I did, like when I first joined that group versus now it's, I mean, it's unrecognizable because, like, one, I'm in significantly better shape than I ever was in college. Mm. And, I mean, I mean, I'm training for a distance, like, I don't even know, like, four, times four of the, what I was racing in college. And I can run my college PRs or faster without even training for them now. So like, cool. So I think what I'm doing with them works for me, at least for, my, for now. I know it probably won't always work. I would have to change it eventually, the, maybe the older I get, but. For mm-hmm. now, everything that I'm doing right now, I think, is the best for me. So I don't know how much you want to talk about this, but do you feel like, well, obviously you're running like 100-mile weeks. Mm-hmm. So do you take your rest days pretty seriously? Would you still consider yourself like a high-volume runner? Or would you say that you're more of like a moderate-volume runner? <laughs> I if think you could even be that at 100 miles a week. I mean, the I've structured, like, during my first marathon build, I structured my training to pretty much high volume to mimic what they do like mm-hmm. they take rest days on sundays i take easy days on sundays i run okay. 35 minutes to 45 40 minutes on mm-hmm. sundays that's like closing like that's like a, almost like a exclamation mark like, of the, the whole week for mm-hmm. me but i do mondays i run easy but easy meaning like i run 10 miles in the morning i run five in the afternoon on workout days usually the volume of the workout usually brings us to like 15 miles on workout days mm-hmm. so i've doubled five miles in the afternoon so i alternate mm-hmm. that so i do 15 on easy days 20 on workout days and i just do that every day of the week and then fridays are my easy days but because i have a super long run on saturday that i only do like 10 or like 12 miles on mm-hmm. saturday on, on friday so to run 22 to 25 on saturday and then mm-hmm. easy like reset for sunday so I think I consider myself high mileage just because not a lot of people can, their body can handle that. Yeah, for sure. Like my body can handle that for the longest time. My body can barely handle 50 or 60 for the longest time in college. So I think I consider myself in the higher volume. And then I think the better I get, the stronger I get, I think I can increase my Sunday runs and my Friday runs. Like before I know, I think 15 and 20 every other day is pretty high volume. I think. What would you want to push your Saturday runs to? I mean, Saturday runs, I would like to go to 25 to 30 miles. Like, I, okay. I, I'm a true believer in, like, overtraining for your distance. Like, mm. if you overtrain for the marathon, I think you'll be good in the marathon. Like, mm-hmm. if you're running more than 26 miles uh, at its one point, you should be able to run 26 miles in a race. I'm like, oh, like, I do this all the time in long runs. Like, I should be able to handle 26 miles. I mean, it's faster, but it's shorter, shorter in a way. Like, you're running less time. Mm. So, yeah, I think I'm in the higher volume of life and just... I know a lot of marathoners like one of my friends he runs 90 miles a week mm. and his body knows that that's it, that it's it's max that's is 90 max. and he gets hurt if he tries to do more than that yeah and I've gone to some points where I've ran like 110 on accident just because I miscalculated things and like my body's like ah oh, like just calm down it's that's just about fine it. <laughs> yeah but I mean I think that's only possible because of the some of the things that I like i um, I, I, like, I realized the importance of like getting massage. Like that. in college, mm-hmm. I got spoiled. Like, mm-hmm. We were getting a massage every week, mm-hmm. once a week, and I got spoiled to that. And like, that's the longest I stretch period. I stayed healthy. So mm-hmm. now I make sure to emphasize like getting a massage once a week. So I try to get a massage like towards the end of the week on Thursdays or something like that. Mm-hmm. Thursdays around like in the afternoon, I go get a massage, and then just do the rest of my like stuff that I do. So. So is a massage, what are your like recovery um, musts, so, I guess, yeah. for 100 miles a week? <laughs> I mean, foam roll. I mean, just everybody has got a foam roller. And then I have a cupping set, like a, a suction mm-hmm. cups that my parents bought me that I use uh, all the time whenever I feel like something's bothering me or just like my quads and stuff like that. And then mm-hmm. getting massage once a week and then just like uh, mobility ex- exercises with like band. And that's pretty much the only things I really do. I don't really believe in ice bath as much just because uh my high school coach always told us that um you should let your body naturally heal itself rather than try to like heal it but with like 
doing ice baths and stuff like that. I do, I still do ice bath like when it comes to close to races, just because, like, at that point you're done. Yeah, pretty much getting better. Like the ice bath will help you recover. Um, but when I'm training in pretty high intensity, like I let my body do its own healing and stuff like that. Unless I'm hurt, I, I'll ice it. But yeah, for most parts, I don't take ice baths. I'm pretty sure um, recovery is a lot about like blood flow, right? Yeah. And so like ice bath is kind of like opposite of that Mm -hmm. (laughs) so maybe that there's something to that i don't know um what about like hydration and nutrition i feel like that's a huge part of a lot of athletes recovery yeah are you pretty strict about your diet are you strict about how much water you're drinking what electrolytes you're taking in yeah or are you just like i'm I'm not super strict okay i just i eat pretty healthy anyway so it doesn't really Mm -hmm. matter like i I'm a creature of a habit. I just do the same thing over and over. Every morning I eat the same meal. I eat potatoes, veggies, eggs, and everything like that. I just make like a veggie bowl almost in a way. Mm-hmm. Every morning I eat the same thing. Unless I have like an afternoon workout, then I just switch to like pancakes. Like my diet is pretty healthy. It's where like I don't really have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've came a long way from that. I mean, like I went from my freshman year of high school when I was like weighing 135 pounds to like now I weigh like 120. Like just like Mm -hmm. I've slowly find my diet to where like I get what I need for like and just I know what my body needs. Um, Mm -hmm. And then I I do take the noon like tablets, noon hydration tablets. Mm -hmm. Every 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 night during dinner I just put one in my 16 ounce bottle and just like Mm -hmm. drink that, and then try to get as much water and electrolytes throughout the day as possible. Mm. So I'm not strict, but. So do you do three meals a day? Do you do like pre post workout? That one's tough. Uh, it's not. Th- it's two big meals. Okay. Um, I wake up, eat a snack. Like usually, because before runs, I like to eat something. So like either like eating a bagel, uh, with Nutella Nutella on it, or like just like something with carbs in the morning to like fill my belly up, mm-hmm. and that won't bother me. And then go run, come home. Usually when I come come home, it's like nine something. So I, I eat a big breakfast. By the time I finish eating my breakfast, it's like 10 a.m. Mm. And I'm already at work. Like most of the time I finish my breakfast at work and just like sitting there eating it. And then I just snack throughout the day and then I come home at five and eat a big dinner. Mm. So I eat two big meals with a lot of snacks. With a lot of snacks. Yeah. I feel like so many marathoners say that. They're like two big meals with a lot of snacks. I've heard it's that hard to times. eat three big meals when mm-hmm. your training schedule is like that. Um, now it's even going to be tougher because we're moving practice to the afternoons. It's mm-hmm. because it's going to be warmer. So I'm going to wake up, run, eat big breakfast still. Like, but my runs are not going to be that intense. They're like 30 minutes at most in the mornings. Mm-hmm. And then go to work, do my workouts, and then eat something big. So it's just going to be sna- like big breakfast, snacks, and then workout, and then dinner, and then bed. Mm. Yeah, it's hard when you're training twice a day because you can't like dump food in you before a workout. Yeah. But you can't go to your workout unfueled. So it is just like a trade-off, I'm sure. Yeah. No, my friend was tr- trying to convince me to become an ultra marathoner because, like, one, one of my you best should. friends, one of my you best friends, is, like, runs a uh, hundred k's, a hundred milers, uh-huh. and she's sponsored by uh, Las Sportivas. Mm-hmm. Like, and she in twenty eighteen, she was a top American. That's crazy. But she's been plagued with a lot of injuries, and mm-hmm. she was trying to convince me. Well, one day she convinced me to run some trail race, like twenty mm-hmm. k trail race. Yeah, and like, it wasn't hard. Like, I want, like, I, but I, I didn't know how to run it, so I just like sat behind the first place guy and just like sprinted like sprint as hard as i could with like a mile to go and one in she's like dude you should have ran the 50k and i'm like no i'm good <laughs> no, i was good. so scared and then she took me on this 20 mile long run with like took like four and a half hours and i was <laughs> dreading every minute of it just because it was so I, well, hilly I just, or i was just so hungry she, she kept giving me a gel and she's like <laughs> I was here just so hungry she gave me a gel and like i took the gel and i'm just like i hate this <laughs> i just like was miserable the whole time i was just like i don't like this yeah that's the thing about ultras is like there's like burritos at the aid stations. And so like when you're talking about like <laughs> Martin gels, yeah. those are so gross. They're disgusting and I can't I like the I like them because they're plain. Yeah, they're very plain. I, I think they're I gross, was taking though. my friend sponsored by um what's the spring energy gels. They're so good. See, that's the problem. I don't think they are. Really? I didn't like them. They're too sweet or what? I think they're, they're so, so good. It's like little applesauce shots that yeah, you're just... I didn't like it. Well, I liked them, but my belly didn't like them. Ah, like, too much it, it just too sugar. Upset. Yeah, I think ah. it's just too much sugar. Yeah. I was just like really upset. It's so. a lot of fruit in there too, which is, which can 
definitely be upsetting as yeah. well. So that's why I didn't like it. The first time I ever took it, I was on a 20 mile long run. I didn't enjoy it. Mm. And I had like massive stitch the whole time running. And I'm like, can we take a break? <laughs> Please. <laughs> but yeah. I think ultras on the road. Now that sounds great. <laughs> ultras in the what? On the road. Oh, yeah. They totally like that's totally a thing, though. And like actual real ultra runners mm-hmm. do them on tracks, even on the road. I think I watched, um, I forgot her name. She's sponsored by Hoka. She broke the, like the. Oh, Camille. Yeah, I watched her in Arizona. She was running it on the Arizona track a long time ago, like She's a 24 hour challenge. And like, I was just like, I went there just because my friends like, convinced me to go to go watch it. And they had like live streams all around the track. I was she, like, recent, she recently beat the world record, yeah? Yeah. For the 24 I so. hours? I think so, yeah. Yeah. But I've just found that wild. I don't know if I can physically run for 24 hours. Like, I think I'm capped out at like five hours, maybe. I think you could do it. If you just train for it, I think you could do it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But that seems, just seems tough. It's like, yeah, that's it's more crazy. a mental game than anything else. Like, your body is fine. I think my body can handle it. It's just my mentally, I don't know if I can stay engaged for that long. Yeah, it's crazy. I feel like with like trail races the biggest thing is like it's more of just like a party like there's beer at the aid stations and like (laughs) it's just so different than marathon Mm -hmm. that even with marathon like your training is so set like you know what your mile splits will be tomorrow yeah and you know what you want your mile splits to be for the rest of the week and for saturday etc but for like ultra training it's like okay let's see how long this takes us and we'll see how it goes you know it's like it seems like such a different world that i don't know i feel like you'd totally crush it because you're so dialed in with yeah your performance so it's cool france well the utmb yeah i want to go to that i I almost went this year because my friend raced it every year Mm -hmm. i one i I just want to go there to be like um part of the crew Mm. More than racing it. I want to go see the environment rather than racing it. Like you'd want to volunteer at the aid stations or something? Yeah. yeah. I think it would be a good, cool experience. I don't think I'm ready to jump into that world yet. Mm. Maybe but someday. Maybe after someday. you're done with <laughs> Olympic marathoning. Yeah. <laughs> but it should be fun. Um, I was try- <sighs> This is the other thing. I was trying to convince my friend to... Because like in 20... I think 2020, me and my friends were sitting there talking. Like my, my friend that's an ultra marathoner. And we're sitting there talking. I'm like, hey, like, what are the odds like you try to qualify for the olympic trials in the marathon in 2024 and she was like yeah let's both do it like she was talking this big game and i texted her like six months ago mm-hmm. I'm like hey like the period closed in six months it's like when are you when are you like the only race available is cim december 3rd it's like will you be there mm-hmm. she said no <laughs> she's like <laughs> she's too scared of the marathon she's too sc- like she runs so many like 100 mile races that she's too scared to run a 26.2 mile race at six minutes it's like miles. a sprint at that point <laughs> yeah well I don't think she's ever ran that fast for that long because mm. she can run for, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 hours at like mm. 10 minute pace. But mm. I don't think she could run six minute miles. I think her 5K PR is like 18 something. I don't think she could run very fast. Five <laughs> You're like, I don't know if you could handle this. <laughs> but, no, I th- I mean, I told her I'll pace her if mm. she wanted to run it. Because like I told her like, that would be cool. Like talking about it four years ago and getting her to do it this year. But mm. maybe when she's like. I don't know. I told her she might be too old for 2028 because she is like, I think, four or five years older than me. Mm. And by 2028, she would be like 33. I was making jokes. I'm like, hey, man, like you're getting, <laughs> you're getting too old. You're like, this is your last chance. <laughs> but no, I, I think she'll probably still do it. But So 10 weeks now, you what time would you need to get? I think we talked about this a little mm-hmm. bit before, but what time would you need to get to qualify so, for the Olympics? Yeah, so there's A standard and a B standard. The A standard is 208.10 for mm-hmm. the Olympic standard. Um, right now, two Americans have it. And then the B standard is 211.30, which is five-minute miles. Um, so I need I would have to run two eleven thirty under 211.30 and finish top three to be able to make it to the Olympic trials, to make it to the Olympic team. And you were seated where right now? Seated like 100th. 100th? Yeah, I think. I might be like 90-something, but... And the 100, yeah. We had 216. But, like, looking around, like, where I think I would be right now, at least in the rankings, I think I could be in the top 30 if I ran the time I thought I was going to run at mm. my first marathon. So, I don't think it's unrealistic. I've also day- daydreamed about this moment, so I, it could happen. We'll see. And I, Or I can just be, my daydreaming might be too far and too advanced for now. We'll see. 
No, you're working super hard. It's like your Instagram is like one of the more inspiring ones that I follow. It's like actually really fun when you post like rooting for you from. No. Yeah. I just like, like the moment I decided that I want to stay in Utah, I pretty much deleted all my personal accounts. Mm. Well, I didn't delete them, deactivated them. Mm. They're st- they still exist. Mm. They're just hidden. Um, I deactivated all my personal accounts. It's all I have is like my Instagram. Mm. And then just, I mean, main reason is because like I, I would find myself like mindlessly scrolling. So mm. I was just like, I, well, I don't want to make this mindless. So I deleted all my personal accounts and just like focus on running, focus on work, focus on just, just like, myself pretty much and just like make myself as market, marketable as possible. And then like, if I really want to, like I can go join some team, I can go join like some group, whatever. But like, I like my situation where I'm at right now. Like I know like, I get no benefit from being in this group. I provide probably no benefit to the group mm. and I like where I'm at. So I think, like, I, I don't know. I, lo- I love the position I'm in right now. Like, mm. I mean, it took me a while to figure out that I enjoy the, what I'm doing right now. And I mean, the people that I have around my corner is also like limited now just because I had a, this conversation with somebody of just like, having too much friends almost like can hinder hinder of like what you are possible of doing and so like i've recently just like i don't really just hang out with people just to hang out like there's always been like oh like do you want to hang out like we can go du- double like we can go run together like have a talk and stuff like mm. that like i'm not just gonna be like oh let's go hang out and I just like sacrifice my second run of the day and like no mm. like if you want to hang out you're gonna have to like and it's kind of mean and stuff like that like maybe on saturday and sundays i can hang out with people but like I don't hang out with people just to hang out with people anymore these days. I just hang out with for a purpose. Um, like, I mean, Saturday and Sunday is different, but Monday through f- Friday, I can't really just hang out just to be like Because you friendly. can't sacrifice your sleep because then that's going to mess up the rest of the week. Mm-hmm. And then you have to run. You have to work. There's yeah. no time after that. You have to eat. Yeah. It's so crazy. There's, there's, little, little no to, there's little to no room for fun these days, but... You can't treat running as a job or anything just because it's not. It's a hobby. It's hobbies mm-hmm. are supposed to be something you enjoy. And mm-hmm. I've like if I text people and be like, hey, when I go for a run, it means I actually want to catch up with you. I want to hang out with you. Mm-hmm. And like I want you to just like do the same, I guess. And so I don't text a lot of people that do that. Mm-hmm. And there's a few people like because like most of my runs are done alone and it's purposeful just because I'm more productive that way. Mm-hmm. Like if I go to the gym to double, that means I'm there to double as well as to lift as well mm-hmm. as to go to sauna. Like if you want to come with me to the gym, I got a plus one pass free every time. So I don't mm-hmm. know. It's just, yeah, I, I, everything that I do these days is for, is purposeful. And a lot of people hate me for it. Like a lot of people are just like, like wow, like like you don't want to be friends with us anymore. You don't want to do this. Like, like, no, like I'm focused on one goal right now. And like you can, like I can hang out with you after this period is over. But like, right now I just need to focus on something and which is myself right now. Mm-hmm. So. It's probably a hard decision, but yeah, I mean, we'll find out if it pays well, off. My mom weeks. calls constantly, so I still have to talk to her. But <laughs> you're like, mom, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, my mom's like, oh, I'm just like, you okay? Like, no, I'm fine. Like, everything's great. Because like, she, she uh, this is also also another thing. This is why she calls and asks that. Um, I don't leave altitude very often. Like, I stay up here <laughs> like 360 days out of the year. <laughs> so there's like five days that you're like, hey, mom. I go home, I go home for three days and I go home for my birthday for two days. <laughs> That's it. That's it. She's like, I see you five days out of the year and I hear that you're like running a hundred mile weeks. Like, so yeah, okay? I mean, I can understand why she calls often, but it's it's just funny just because like for the longest time, I like, I didn't live at altitude for a long time. And then the moment mm. I started living up here and saw the benefits, I'm like, then why would I ever leave? I get it. Like, it's, <laughs> I get it. It's, it's warmer in Arizona during the winter. Like, I mm. love, like, the, those three days I'm in Arizona during the winter, mm. I love it because it's like, the coldest is like 40 something degrees. Mm. And then it's like, it warms up to like 70 by the end of the day. Mm. So those three days that I'm there, it's I nice. love it. Yeah. But it's sea level. Like, I just try not to, not to compromise that. So I stay up here as long as I can. Um, like the last couple of months, I did go home for a little more often. My mom was like, oh, let's surprise my cousin, stuff like that. So here mm-hmm. and there, I've left. But besides races, I don't really leave often. And then to, like, my parents come here to visit here and there, so which helps. I mean, it's only an hour flight. Like, they, and I have an airport right next to my house. So, like, my roommate drops me off. TSA doesn't take very long. Like, so it, it's not really a waste of time or anything. 
And I would love to go home to see my parents more often just because almost all the kids moved out of the house. Mm. My mom's really bored mm. and she decided to t- retire early. So she has more time in our hands to call. But she's loving life and she's starting a new hobby of knitting. So she just knits blankets every day and all day. You need hats this winter. So <laughs> <laughs> tell her that. <laughs> so, yeah, she's, she, I think it's because she's bored mm. and like I'm the most entertaining child of them all so <laughs> so you can entertain her <laughs> yeah well it's she finds my, my lifestyle a lot more entertaining than my brother so like mm. she calls me often and then my other brothers are still in arizona so like she sees them very often mm. so and then she makes sure to call me every because i didn't go home for thanksgiving i mm. went and did friends friendsgiving whatever and she called and asked and like hey like what are you doing for thanksgiving but like she's not really asking. She's she's trying to show off that what she's doing. <laughs> like she FaceTimes every Thanksgiving because like, I stay in Utah almost every Thanksgiving. She's she like, FaceTimes. <laughs> yeah, she FaceTimes purposely to show off what she's doing. To, so to, what was she doing to this give me FOMO? Uh, she, she went to my grandma's and all that. But mm-hmm. I won this Thanksgiving because uh. I went to a really bougie thanks Friendsgiving. <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm glad you FaceTimed me right now. <laughs> like, I was like joking about it too, like I like at dinner, and then literally four minutes later, she called. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, but it's yeah, my mom is really funny, and she keeps up with my like, shenanigans and stuff like that, and like mm. entertains it in a way, mm. and like she knows how silly I am, and she matches that energy. So, mm. I love it. So Are they able fine. to come to some of your races? So, this is the com- we had this conversation the other day. Mm. Um, they used to come to my races mm. and my mom's like, recently my parents were like, well, seems like you run a lot better than when, when we're not there. <laughs> You're like, do I? <laughs> cause I invited them to, cause like to Orlando. I was like, Hey, like if you guys want to, I mean, when I invited to Orlando, it was like for two purposes. Mm-hmm. One, they can come watch the race. Mm. Two, it's Disney World. Ah. So I was like, Hey mom, you guys want to come to uh, Orlando, Florida? My <laughs> race is on November 3rd, I mean, December 3rd, if you guys want to come and then we can go to Disneyland on, on Disney World on December 4th. Mom was like, well, <laughs> my dad's like, well, let me be honest. Like, you don't really run very well when we're there to watch. So, like, we'll let <laughs> you. Like, <laughs> Ouch. So, they're like, we'll let you do your thing. And I was like, I was like, so is that a no to Disney World? So, yeah. Because, like, like, the, oh the main reason I proposed that idea is because when I was younger, we went to Disneyland twice a year. Like, mm-hmm. Christmas and birthdays. Because, like, it was, like, perfectly split in half. So, like, my birthday was in May. Mm-hmm. We would go to Disney World. And then my uh. and then Christmas, we would go. Because, like, they got married there. So, like, mm-hmm. they would love to go as much as they can. That's cute. So, for, like, six years, we went every year, twice a year. So, it's just nostalgic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I was like, Disney World would be different, but it would be the same. Mm-hmm. But they said no. Yeah. <laughs> but. That's funny. Yeah. I honestly, when I race, I almost prefer when andrew doesn't come because he like it like almost stresses me out that someone's like waiting for me like expecting me to finish at a certain time so if i can just like do my own thing it's mm-hmm. almost less it's a lot more relieving yeah like, you don't have an i don't know how to explain yeah. it yeah i i mean all my last like three races i've been traveling alone i do everything mm-hmm. alone like so like and those have been my most successful races so like i can't like i mean i can agree with that like mm. so when they said that, I'm like, well, it's kind of true. Like, all my better races mm. have come when they weren't there. Like, they, they, I mean, most of my races these days, like, they're so big that most of them are televised so they can still watch them. Mm. So, yeah, I agree with them to where they said I do do better when I'm alone. And, like, mm. I don't have people distracting me. Mm. Like, I do get distracted very easily. Then you just zone in, focus on yourself and, like, mm. what you need your performance to be, basically. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Well... Um, Hobbs is supporting himself right now, working a full-time job. So if you want to support him, where well, can... Well, I have an apparel deal by Bandit, but... Oh, he does have an apparel but, deal by Bandit. <laughs> but it's, it's... Bandit allows second sponsors. Mm. So if you want to support him, what are your, like, social media links? Do um, you do a YouTube? I think you just started YouTube, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's Everything is the same. Uh, it's Runner Hobbs. Mm. Just runner, H-A-B-S. And then my YouTube is just my full name. It's Habtamu Chaney. It's, it's all linked to my Instagram. Cool. And we'll link it in the description to the podcast too. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. <laughs>